Hi, I'm going to introduce you to the Workplace application today. So Workplace is a concept I've been working on for a while in MLJS. The idea is ultimately to create something that's as easy to use as the app builder to create applications. And that's exactly what I've delivered now in the Workplace app. So when you first log into the Workplace app, you don't get any pages. You literally have the home page, a configure app page, and a configure page button. You don't have any of these pages here. These are pages that I've configured. The way you do this is you go into the application menu and you start to create pages. So here we can see a list of pages I've already got. I could add a new one down here. But I'm just going to show you a few existing pages for now. So I'm going to go through the example pages and show you how they're set up. So if we go to the search page here, this is just a standard search page. It's been set up with an action so that when the page loads, it performs a search with the string England. The data you can see is just some sample data I've got in one of my other content databases. And it's just Twitter data from the World Cup recently. So as you can see, there's a facets widget on the left, a search widget, pagination widget, and a results widget. And the way you configure this is pretty simple. So on each page, you can edit the page directly on the page, no need to flick between menus. What you effectively do is you create a page with a title, add a URL to it and set the layout. Here we've got thin thick, so we've got thin left hand column, thick right hand column. And all you do with the widgets is you drag and drop them over onto these drop areas and you can even rearrange widgets uh, pretty easily just like this. As you can see they're being rearranged. So you can configure the widgets in here but in order to link them together what you need to do is join them with a context. Now these are all search widgets, they relate to a particular search going on, a set of search results, search facets so within my search context, I highlight all of the widgets on the page that relate to that. What this also means is you can have multiple search contexts. So if you want to create a dashboard page, then you can have you know, just some of the widgets connected to each of the search contexts. Now, I've not specified any JSON options in here. So these are standard MicroLogic JSON search options. And I've not specified a name for the options. And that instructs MLJS Workplace to use the all.xml uh, options file. On page load, I've also configured one action. You can configure multiple actions in here, but I've just got one, and I'm executing do simple query on the search context. So anything you can do in JavaScript, you can do in here. And as you can see, I'm providing the string England into the simple query. So if I hit cancel here, you see that's exactly what the page has got here. So that's very straightforward to create a search page. If you want to take that one step further, you might want to create a map-driven search page for tweets. So, totally different view again, but over the same data. It also helps if you can actually memorize the longitude and latitude of Rio de Janeiro properly. I'm particularly useless at typing this in. So, by default, this page is looking at the wrong place. But that's entirely my fault, nothing to do with MLJS. Just me being a numpty and having a long week. So, you can see here that the open layers widget is showing a heat map of the tweets that's coming back. We have a search bar again at the top, but at the bottom we have search results again and these will change so I can do things like a geospatial search double click and that restricts down the tweets and as you can see they changed at the bottom of here as well now you might imagine this is quite a complex page to query but it's not really so if I click on configure page you'll see how easy that is so here we've used a single column layout so we have a search bar open layers widget followed by a search results widget the only slight complexity I've got here is in the configuration of open layers so there has to be a constraint in your search options to enable the search selection so that open layers widget knows exactly where to set the selection area to. And there's also a heat map granularity which you can keep as high. There's a start location for the map to initially zoom to and the zoom level 11 is a pretty good city wide uh, zoom level generally. And then what you need to do, you can add one or more series in this current version Open layers just supports one series of data. So if you think about this, this is effectively just saying the search results and where the data comes from. So I've called this series tweets and that shows up in the layers of the open layers widget. I've linked it to a search context. I've not really extracted any information, so I'm not showing markers for these points, I'm just showing the heat map. And we see that the heat map is held within the constraint information called location. So the same constraint as before. And that's really as complicated as it gets. Again, on the context page, I'm not specifying my search options, they're just the default all search options, and I'm linking all my three widgets to it. 
and there's no actions on page load there. So very simple widget. Easy page to configure, even though there's quite a lot of functionality there. I can even go into the whole semantics realm here. So if I go into the semantics test page, what this shows is a sparkle bar widget. And by clicking on search there, I can search and show results for a whole range of entities. These are all people. So these are all uh, faux person entities. Clicking on one will give me all facts we've got about that particular person. So you see who they know, who they're friends with, how many messages they've sent, uh, which tweets they're mentioned in. Now that's all very well and good, but if I want really, rather than a search interface, I want to look at this person and visually see their relationships, I can click on this all seen eye icon. Now this is a piece of configuration that then sends us to another page. So if I click on that, you notice we go from the semantics page to the explorer page, and we're passing some configuration between the pages there. And we see again that the person object's rendered, we see all the links they've got, and there's one square here for each link, so if I click on a tweet, that tweets a Mark logic document, so we get the mentions and the URI from within our triples, but these elements all come from the facets within the document, so that's looked up by the Graph Explorer widget. And again, somebody else we know, there's a Twitter ID there, but we don't know what type it is, we don't know if it's a person or an application, and we just know that they know that person. So again, you can visually view through that. Well, that's two pages there, so if I go back to the semantics page first, if I click on configure page here, we'll see how this is done. So we have a thick thin layout, so thicker columns on the left. We have a sparkle bar widget on the left, entity facts on the right, and you see the URI here. So this is going to this application URL and passing in the IRI of the selected entity within the entity facts widget. So that's just a piece of built in functionality within that widget. And we also have a Sparkle results widget. Now the context is slightly different on this one because it's a semantic search. So we have a semantic context, page size of 10, linked to all those three widgets. And again, no actions. Oh, sorry, there is one action on page load. We're doing an initial subject query. And we're pulling back um, facts for uh, pretty much everything there. So we're pulling back a set of facts for a widget. So this was just some sample test code I had in there which I'd forgotten about. I was just playing around doing some testing. This doesn't actually have any effect on the particular widgets. This is just testing some underlying functionality. So ignore that. There isn't actually anything going on on page load really that affects the UI. Uh, again, once we click through to the Explorer page, there's really only one widget on this page. As you can see, if we just click on the page, there's nothing drawn because we've not passed that IRI value in. But here we see one column with the Graph Explorer widget. We see we have several contexts. So the semantic context you'd expect linked to the Graph Explorer widget. But the Graph Explorer also uses a search context and a document context to pull back information about the document and its facets as it's extracted from the search context. So that's why there's all three of these contexts. So that one widget is registered with all three in order to give it the functionality it needs. And again, on page load, there's nothing there. The reason this particular widget receives the IRI in the URI in the URL of the page is because there's a hidden context uh, within Workplace, and that's called the page context. This looks for query string parameters coming into the uh, URL field, and it figures out what to do with them automatically. So by default, anything with IRI gets passed into the semantic um, context widget for a subject query and that happens automatically. Similar things happen to document URIs and the queue parameter for plain text queries as well as the structured query parameter. So have a look at the page context if you're interested in that. Finally there's an analytics page. I just wanted to show the concept of adding uh, widgets to a page. So here we see just a refresh button. If I click that refresh button we'll see uh, a couple of different uh, co-occurrence widgets showing different information. So here we're seeing author versus author and here we're seeing author versus topic. So you see this particular person is talking about whatever that is in Portuguese. Um, looks like some person's name. Uh, but there we go. And the way you configure this is you don't particularly need a refresh widget, it's just there as a test. But if we click on configure page we see we have a thin thick layout again the refresh search is in structured search mode, so it will always fire off a structured query. 
we see there's two co-occurrences linked. So we see we've given them a human readable title, but we've also given them the tuple that they'll display. So within the search context, you can actually go and look up multiple tuples in the same query. So here we just specify exactly which ones get shown by the search context. Uh, so that enables one query to affect multiple widgets. If we go to the context there, so search context, this time we're giving it a custom options name. So we'll go and look at these in a minute. We're linking them to all three widgets again. But crucially at the bottom, we changed the search endpoint. By default, this is search. You can also provide a custom one if you create a REST extension that does a special type of MarkLogic search. Um, and what we're doing here is we're providing two tuples. So those of you who know the REST API may know that you can actually only do one tuple calculation at a time. But what I've actually done is I've configured the search context to enable it to go and do multiple ones. So one query can affect multiple tuple lookups, which is quite a useful bit of functionality. And that's where that works. On page load, we can see that we are doing a structured query by default to load those results. So if, for example, I click on the page again, you'll see as well as the refresh button, we also get the lookups come back. So hopefully you've seen there that Workplace is quite quick and easy to create useful pages for demonstrations. You can plug in custom widgets, you can style this however you want because you're just using Bootstrap CSS so you can download a theme and plug it in. But in future presentations I'll show you how to go in and create these individual pages, add the search options in uh, and how to create some really uh, advanced pages. I hope you've enjoyed the demo. Thanks.